Hello, my name is Aaron Bernardino and my uh, government agency is United States Postal Service or USPS as most people tend to know it. The USPS, to start off, is a federal agency. So a little bit of history about the USPS. Um, the USPS has... So a little bit of history. Hello, my name is Aaron Bernardino and my government agency is the United States Postal Service or USPS as most people tend to recognize it and go by. So the uh, USPS is a federal agency and a little bit of history about it. The USPS goes back further than you might think. A lot of people might not know that it's actually older than the United States, the country. Uh, so Benjamin Franklin was appointed Postmaster General, the first Postmaster General of the United Colonies. This was in July 26, 1775, which explains why it's United Colonies, not United States. At that time, the colonies had not yet declared their independence. So USPS, older than the actual country. Interesting fact, I think. Uh, anyways, fast forward a little bit. On July 1st, 1847, the first United States postage stamps went on sale in New York City. So before that, there had been postage stamps, but these were the first official United States postage stamps. Uh, they were five cents or 10 cents, depending on who was on the stamp. For example, the five cent one, Benjamin Franklin, first postmaster general, and the 10 cent one, George Washington first president, as we all know. These were the two first US postage stamps um, that went to, on sale in New York City. Just wanted to show, an, show the example. So the function of the USPS, their mission statement is to serve the American people and through the universal service obligation, which I'll get to in a little bit, bind our nation together by maintaining and operating our unique, vital, and resilient infrastructure. So the United U Universal Service Obligation is something that's pretty unique to the USPS. I'll go a little more into that. To provide trusted and safe and secure communications and services between our government and the American people, businesses and their customers and the American people with each other. And to serve all areas of our nation, making full use of evolving technologies. This last point ties directly into the uni Universal Service Obligation so this is pretty unique to the USPS. Um, for example, FedEx, UPS, package companies that we all know, they are not obligated to do anything. They're a private business. If a certain delivery, if a certain address, route, whatever, you, um, is not profitable for them, it does not make sense financially as a business, they can just choose not to do it. The USPS does not have this luxury. Uh, they are federal service to public service. They're meant to serve the American people, so they are bound by the universal service obligation. Uh, this can be found in, it's not defined specifically, but it generally understood as the requirement to serve to all of the United States. Uh, most, most of it can be found in section 101, A and B of the of 39 of the US code, which reads that the postal service shall have as its basic function, the obligation to provide postal services to bind the nation together through the personal, educational, literary, and business correspondence of the people. It shall provide prompt, reliable, and efficient services to patrons in all areas and shall render postal services to all communities. That's a pretty important part. Like I said, other companies can do whatever they want, private businesses. The USPS is a federal, uh, federal agency and a business at the same time, but they are required to provide service everywhere or at least access to, to service. The Postal Service shall provide a maximum degree of effective and regular postal services to rural areas, communities, and small towns where post offices are not self-sustaining. I'll explain more in a little bit. No small post office shall be closed solely for operating at a deficit, it being the specific intent of the Congress that effective postal services be ensured to residents of both urban and rural commun communities. This is a pretty important part. Like I said, other companies can just shut down something if it's not profitable. This part right here, no small post office shall be closed solely for operating at a deficit, it being the specific intent of Congress that effective postal services be ensured to residents of both urban and rural communities. This means that if a post office, if a delivery address is not profitable, 
does not matter. USPS has to provide the service. Um, due to this universal service obligation, they, they're they're meant to provide mail service, package service to the to the American people. Therefore, um, financially, the the thought process is kind of uh, more profitable, more <clears throat> excuse me, more rural urban communities, uh, these bigger markets that may be very profitable for them. They will compensate for the loss that may be incurred at smaller post offices, rural communities. Um, so that's pretty interesting. This is an example of the universal service uh, obligation in, in action. So this is one of the, the very last meal service routes deliveries. They deliver, it's the USPS, they have to deliver to um, a place in the Grand Canyon, which, you know, is pretty tough to get to. So they still resort to using meals. Um, not very efficient. But due to the location circumstances, this is their best option. And due to the universal service obligation, they have to provide the service somehow. So this is how they do it. Okay, so how the USPS meets, and meets its function. Obviously, to provide mail to all these places, they need a lot of points, a lot of, a lot of employees, lots of resources. So they have 164.9 million delivery points. And they're broken down into 12.7 business delivery points and 152.2 million residential delivery points. So their revenue in 2022 was 78.8 billion. A lot. More than 635 employees work for the USPS. And there are 31,132 post offices. This is broken down into leased and owned properties. You can see they mostly lease properties. Which means that, like I said... They're, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, so to provide this service to all of the American people, the USPS needs a lot of resources. Uh, they have 164.9 million delivery points in total. This is broken down into 12.7 business and 152.2 uh, residential. That's in million. Um, and they have 78.8 billion in revenue into 2022. They have more than 635,000 employees and 31,132 post offices, which is broken down into lease and owned properties. 236 532 postal vehicles and just a quick fact uh 44 percent of all mail in the world is processed by usps usps does not receive public funds they are one of the very few self-sustaining government agencies federal agencies they receive all their revenue from their business practices sales postage um so yeah, they they are able to maintain their own operations due simply to their revenue. They don't need any public funds. Uh, this they do receive help from the government. Being a federal agency, they are exempt from taxes, and uh, they have a couple different monopolies. First of all, they have the monopoly on letters. Anything that's a letter is processed by the USPS. And second, monopoly on mailboxes. Mailboxes are only used by the USPS. And um, so, like I said, they, they receive some help from the government, but not in, in terms of tax money funds. They are able to fund their, their, their own operations. So this is Louis DeJoy. This is the current and 75th Postmaster General. Uh, and he's been in this position since June, 2020. Uh, Postmaster General is, uh, for example, Benjamin Franklin was the first. Uh, Louis DeJoy is our current. Employment requirements. So it is a federal agency. So there, there are you know certain requirements to work at the USPS. You have to be eighteen years or old, eighteen years old or older. Uh, you must be able to pass a criminal background check, drug screening, and medical assessment. You have to be a citizen, permanent resident, or citizen of American Samoa or other U.S. territory. So uh, you have to be in the country legally, in simpler terms. Must provide recent employment history and safe driving record if you're going to drive, uh, and must be registered with the Selective Service. 
Oh, that's it for my slides. Um, so to conclude, uh, if I think the USPS meets its function, I do think the USPS meets its basic function. I've had some bad experiences with FedEx, um, nothing with UPS, but FedEx has uh, caused me some issues a couple times. The USPS is pretty reliable. I don't send letters. I think overall letters are on the decline. Most people have more efficient forms of communication, text, email, video calls, calls. Um, so letters are I'm sure the, the numbers are going down. Personally, I do not send letters. I've never sent letters. However, when in terms of packages, the USPS is pretty reliable. Uh, I think they meet their basic function. Whether it is efficient is up for debate. A paper published in 2005 titled Policy Watch, Reform of the US Postal Service, argues that it is inefficient. This is due to the previous monopolies I have discussed. They have a monopoly on mailboxes on letters, so they are shielded somewhat from competition. They 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 don't have an incentive to satisfy shareholders, to provide profit, grow profit. They simply have to self-sustain and have very few little competition. So due to this, the, the, the paper argues that the USPS costs are a little inflated. They're a little higher than they should be. Uh, they are not operating as efficiently as they can. Uh, so whether it's efficient or not, I do not think so, but overall, I think they provide uh, their basic function to the American people, to people in rural communities uh, pretty well. And most people tend to agree, I think. Uh, the USPS is one of the higher rated, higher publicly loved, accepted government agencies, which can be tricky, like, you know, IRS, not, not very loved and all. But USPS, on the other hand, alongside other uh, government agencies, such as National Park Service and the such, USPS, on the other hand, alongside with some agencies such as the National Park Service, the USPS is overall pretty pretty accepted, pretty pretty loved by the public. So I think most people, including myself, think the USPS meets its function. Thank you.